Hey gang, LinkedIn is number one in B2B display advertising in the U.S. And using LinkedIn advertising gives you a great advantage. You can stand out against your competitors while nurturing customer relationships and growing your brand. LinkedIn's targeting tools allow you to reach your precise audience down to their job title, company name, location, and more. That means your ads are being seen by those who matter. Scale your marketing, grow your business with LinkedIn advertising. As a thank you to their customers for helping them grow three times faster than the competition and just for listening to Winfluence, LinkedIn is offering a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash Winfluence. That's right. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence just for you to claim that credit. LinkedIn.com slash Winfluence. A hundred bucks in free ads? I'm down. On this episode of Winfluence. Do you think there's any fear for those of us in the space that adding even more people to an already noisy room full of pontificators kind of defeats the purpose? I mean, if everyone's podcasting, who has time to listen? You know, I may have believed that maybe a year ago, but I've met so many incredible podcasters. I met a guy that he literally does a podcast about Star Trek, and he does it from a a place of leadership. So he talks about all the leadership skills in each episode. That's his podcast. Like it's very niche, but by the end of this year, he's going to be doing speaking engagements and his podcast full time. Wow. There's a difference between being an influencer and actually influencing. I'm Jason Falls. And in this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate that difference. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. If you've listened to Winfluence for any length of time, you know that for the influencers and content creators out there, I'm bullish on building and growing your owned content channels, blogs, websites, email newsletters, podcasts, the properties where you own the content and the audience, as opposed to social networks where your content is on someone else's website and the audience is not yours, but theirs. So I typically recommend content creators consider starting a podcast, among other things. It's a great way to have a deeper, more personal, and long-form connection with your audience. It's also a great way to network with other creators and grow your audience by having them on as guests, assuming they'll promote their episode to their followers, and most do. But I also make that recommendation with a caveat. You have to really want to do it to make it work. If you are hesitant at all, hosting your own podcast probably isn't a good idea. But you can still leverage other people's podcasts by being a guest. Share your insights and opinions with other people's audiences in hopes they'll come over and become a member of your following, too. Brittany Brown and Rob Winters were so frustrated finding guests for their agency's podcast, they started what is essentially a dating app for podcast hosts and potential guests. It's called PodOps. It's an app. You download it to your phone. If you host a podcast, you set up a host profile. If you want to promote yourself as a guest, you set up a guest profile. The app then matches interests and subject matters in a dating app style connection. The hosts find guests they're interested in. The guests find relevant podcasts to be on and spread their message. I invited Brittany and Rob to come on the show and talk about the ins and outs of the app and who benefits the most from using it. But we also talked about the explosion of podcasting in general. Why your business or brand, whether it's as a creator or a more traditional company, should start a podcast, and a lot more. Even if you're just interested in being a guest on podcasts, you should give today's episode a listen. It'll help steer you in a good direction. You just might find pod ops as a great way to get booked or find guests. More with Brittany and Rob in a moment. As always, we have to thank our presenting sponsor on this show, and that is Tagger. I literally just finished looking at an influencer's activation metrics before I started working on the episode today. We had an influencer visiting Lexington, Kentucky this weekend. Visit Lex, the CVB there, is a longtime Cornette client. I had set the creator up in a Tagger campaign and instructed the influencer to use the share the Lex hashtag and tag visit Lex in his posts. Well, he arrived on Friday and started firing off Instagram stories about his visit right away. So on Saturday morning, I jumped in and checked. 26 stories already, 150,000 impressions, and a potential reach of over 675,000 people, all just with Instagram stories. I found it in a matter of seconds and was able to update my team with it because I used Tagger. I set the campaign up. I tell it what creators and hashtags to look for. 
make sure the creators know which ones to use, and the tool does all that measurement stuff for me. I just hit a button. I make sure my date range is right, and boom, I've got a PDF report to share with the client. Now, I could go on, but you know I use it. You know I love it. You should check it out, too. It might be right for your brand or your agency. Go to jason.online slash tagger to get a free demo and see if tagger is right for you. The URL again is jason.online slash tagger. Whether or not you want to start a podcast or just be a guest on them, you're in for a treat and information and advice today. Brittany Brown and Rob Winters from PodOps are next on Winfluence. Okay, for all you small business owners out there or people who are on a little bit of a constrained budget when it comes to influencer marketing, I've got something for you. You should be connecting with micro and nano influencers. They can help promote your products or services on social media. You need to look no further now than reach influencers. It is a cost-effective, easy-to-use influencer marketing software solution for as little as $100 a month, Reach Influencers will help you find, engage, and pay online creators in a one-stop shop system. They've got a special URL just for you. Go to CaptureTheInfluence.com slash podcast. CaptureTheInfluence.com slash podcast. You can get signed up and start connecting today. All that fancy software at a price point that's good for your business. That's Reach Influencers. You can find them at CaptureTheInfluence.com slash podcast. So Brittany and Rob, I really want to dive into why content creators and influencers should consider podcasting. But first, you guys launched a pretty nice app, PodOps, which forgive me if this is not quite right, but I looked at it and thought this is like Tinder for podcasts and guests. Is that about accurate? Perfect description. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, that is exactly what we want people to say. Well, so tell us a little bit about PodOps, how it works and who it's for. Yeah, absolutely. So as you said, kind of Tinder for podcasters, it is matching hosts and content creators. And it really came about as we were trying to find guests for our own podcast and going through, you know, endless emails and text chains with people. And in a lot of instances, they kind of went down a rabbit hole where people disappeared. So we thought, how can we make this easier? How can we bring people into one place Put it in your pocket. It's an app, not a website. So it's not something you have to constantly be going to on your computer and just make it seamless. And kind of the the magic sauce behind it is the machine learning where the more you're using it, it's learning about you and about the other users. And it's giving you a score and it's matching you to those other users. So it's saying, you know, Brittany and I, maybe we're a 50% match or 75% match. And those are the people that it's going to say, hey, these are the people you really want to connect with. Of course, you can talk to whoever you want, but we're trying to say these are your best connections for that, you know, potentially perfect interview. Excellent. So, Brittany, we've had a sponsor on this show before that manually books guests for you. So how is PodOps different than a PR or outreach service like Outlier Audio or Kitcaster and all those others out there? I think that this is more for people that maybe don't have the ability to have someone doing bookings for them. And I mean, it's an app, you download it, there is a free version. So it makes it really easy for you to jump on there, fill out a profile, and then start, you know, swiping back and forth, which I will say people love to do. If you've ever been on a dating site, it is kind of fun. And I think that it really is for more of those indie podcasters that are getting started in the space. And for people that have those really like niche type podcasts, where, you know, a booking agent is great and all, but they do cost money. And you know, a lot of times the indie podcasters are doing this as a hobby or as a side gig or, you know, something to that nature. And it doesn't really make sense for them to have a booking agent. Right. So I know your your core company, I believe, Digitive, I believe is, I hope I'm saying that right, is it's not primarily focused on podcasting, I don't think. So t- take me back a little bit and tell me how PodOps came about. I know uh, you know, Rob, you said it was, you know, sort of the frustration of you booking guests on your own podcast, but why would you launch an app uh, that was certainly relevant to your business, but not the primary focus of it? Yeah. So, so for Digitive, we had launched a podcast and really Brittany and I started dabbling in it because Brittany was much more in the podcasting space than I was. I listened to a couple. Brittany was much more the avid podcast consumer. We launched our podcast and it was centered around small businesses and entrepreneurs. And we started sharing 
kind of our own stumbles and pitfalls being a small business. And then we started interviewing entrepreneurs, asking them, you know, where have you made mistakes? Where have you learned lessons? But we quickly exhausted our own areas. I'm in Baltimore, Brittany's in Savannah, and there are only so many local people we can, you know, get to within arm's length. And that's where we had to start turning to the internet and going through Facebook and looking at other sites. And it was tedious. It was time consuming. And we are a small business. So we're already wearing, you know, 10 hats and working very long days. We don't have hours and hours to invest in looking people up. So we thought, got to be a better way. Let's just do it ourselves. We'll build an app. Not that that's a you know quick undertaking. It took about a year to actually build out the version one of the app and get it to market. But it is becoming actually a cornerstone of the business as we look at how can we incorporate more tools into the app or product servicings to help and support podcasters. And we've actually even gotten into the production area, which originally was not our forte. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Podcast production is one of those things that everybody seems to want. And nobody seems to want to do um, just because it, it takes time and it takes attention. You can't just whip it out. You've got to, if you've got, you know, an hour and a half worth of stuff to go through. You got to listen to the whole hour and a half and you got to listen to it slowly. You got to stop and start. So it takes forever. And I know that firsthand because I produce a couple of podcasts in addition to my own. Um, and I almost keep my own as I'm just going to take the, you know, the raw, you know, podcast and put it in the middle and have an intro and an outro and I'm done. Although sometimes I have to go in and edit certain things, but, uh, but I, I have a couple that I edit very specifically, like the person who's, you know, running it says, I want all of the breaths taken out and the ums and the stumbles taken out. And so that is meticulous. You have to be really uh, concentrated on that, but I'm glad that you're, you know, starting to offer up services. I want to ask you about a couple of those in a minute, but the primary reason I wanted to have you guys on the show is that one of the many components of pod ops is that you help people. I'll assume for a minute and say companies start podcasts, but you offer production and editing services and such as we were talking about, but you also offer marketing services and you've got a captive audience of at least those predisposed to listen to podcasts here. Some of them are influencers and creators, which I want to get into talking about in a minute, but some of them are agencies and brands. So what's your best pitch, Brittany, on why, they, the audience listening here, should start a podcast? I think it's a great strategic branding option because number one, I think from a podcast, you get more of a personality of the business because you're getting that one-on-one time. It's more intimate than having like a social marketing campaign and things like that. And I think it also just helps you. There's so many different ways you can utilize the podcast. You can use it for, I mean, something that we utilized it for in the beginning, which actually kind of it, it just happened. It wasn't something we had planned on was that we had interviewed these entrepreneurs. And then after we had done the podcast with them, we actually became friendly with a lot of these people. And within a year's time, 98% of them had come back to us to do some sort of service for them. So it actually worked for our business in that way, which it was unintended, but it's been great for us. And, and let's, so let's assume everybody starts a podcast then if they follow your advice and concept, something they line up guests or the content, start recording and all that good stuff. What advice do you have to get people to listen to it? How do you market a podcast these days? Cause there's the biggest problem with podcasting in my mind is discovery uh, because the podcast industry for some reason can't build a search engine. Um, but uh, so how do you get it? How do you break through the clutter? How do you get people to pay attention to your show? I think most of our clients hate hearing this, but work on it. It's very tedious. It is a multi-channel marketing approach. So you you put in the work to do the podcast. It's not going to get people to listen to it all by itself. So the first and easiest one, especially for clients who have small or no budget, is let's work on social. Social is the easiest thing we can do. If they have budget, potentially getting into other organizations' newsletters we put any of our clients in our own newsletter. So that gives them some promotion. It gives them access to our own podcasters and some cross promotion there. Uh, You know, we also suggest that they make sure that they've got a dedicated component on their website to the podcast so that they are showing up in search results. We've heard mixed feedback from other organizations who say that websites don't matter for podcasts. I really disagree with that. I think it does. Yeah, I mean, if you look at our website, well, we've got two websites. Each one has a place for both podcasts. We, you know, we work really hard on that. And then also creating additional pieces of content from your podcast. So 
you know, an example we do with our own is we write a blog for each podcast. So there's two pieces of content. And sometimes we see people that read our blog coming over to the podcast who didn't originally do it. So it's a way to pull them in and we'll even embed the player for that specific episode into the top of the blog. So it's like, hey, are you in a rush today? Listen to the episode. It's going to be a little different. You're going to get the same content. I mean, you're going to get some of the, let's say witty, not annoying <laughs> banter that Brittany and I do, but you're going to get the content. Very good. So Brittany, do you think, um, just kind of spitballing here, do you think there's any fear for those of us in the space that adding even more people to an already noisy room full of pontificators kind of defeats the purpose? I mean, if everyone's podcasting, who has time to listen? You know, I may have believed that maybe a year ago, but I've met so many incredible podcasters. And like, I met a guy that he literally does a podcast about Star Trek and he does it from a place of leadership. So he talks about all the leadership skills in each episode. That's his podcast. He's been growing that. It's very neat. Like it's very niche. So, but by the end of this year, he's going to be doing speaking engagements and his podcast full time. Wow. So he'll be quitting his nine to five. That's incredible. But there's an audience out there. You just have to find them. And you just, I mean, if you're doing quality content, I think it's totally possible for everyone to have a place in the space. Sure. Well, and, and podcasts give, you know, I mean, I've told people before, all you have to do theoretically is turn on the voice memo thing on your phone and talk and share your opinions on something. And you, know, you might only have two people in the world that care, you know, maybe your mom and your best friend, but you can do that and you can easily upload it to a service and put it out there for the world. And if it's interesting enough to more people, then all of a sudden you're going to build an audience. And so uh, the technology allows people, you know, anybody to do this, which is both good and bad. But the accessibility, I think, is really, really powerful. Don't go anywhere, gang. After the break, we find out what podcasts Brittany and Rob enjoy most, plus talk more about the advantages of leveraging podcasts by being a guest to grow your audience. Stay tuned. Support for Winfluence and all the shows in the Marketing Podcast Network is provided by Storyblock. Think of your content management system. Now think of it being able to update the other 5, 10, or even 20 places you need those prices or product descriptions changed. Update content once, publish it everywhere. Sign up for a free account to see how simple content management can be. Go to storyblock.com slash Winfluence. That's storyblock without the C dot com slash Winfluence. Rob, you, you said you weren't really into podcasts for a while. So what kind of podcasts are you into now? What do you find interesting? What do you listen to? Well, riffing off of what Brittany just said, I love that another nerd is being very successful in the podcast industry. However, I'm a huge tech person and a huge nerd. So most of my podcasts are kind of in that space. A lot of what I'm listening to is language learning related. Mm -hmm. uh, learning Spanish has been a big part of my last couple of years since we went into 2020 and all the joy that that brought to everybody's life. And so the consumption of a lot of those podcasts and listening to people telling stories in Spanish and then language lessons in Spanish has actually been really helpful um, and a lot of fun for me. And it's something you can honestly do like while you're taking the, the dog out on a walk or you're on the treadmill or whatever you're doing. So I, I mean, it's not as exciting as true crime necessarily, but it's like, hey, it's two birds with one stone. I'm learning something and I'm getting some content. Speaking of true crime, uh, down in, in your uh, area, Brittany, there's the the Murdoch family murders. Uh, I've been listening to, or Murdoch, I guess is how you pronounce it correctly. Uh, I've been listening to that that podcast. Crazy interesting. What are, your, uh, what are your podcasts that you listen to? So I do listen to that podcast as well. It's very interesting. I, I think uh, she does a great job. And I listen to a lot of commentary podcasts and also a lot of entrepreneurial and um, I'm a little bit different because I love like very aggressive personalities. So that's typically what I'm drawn to is like a more of a, an aggressive po podcast, but I do love the true crime. I do think that there have been a lot of cool true crime that have come out that have just been so well done as a podcast. And then they've, I mean, they've remade them into a 2020 episode and then You've also done a series. And so I think that podcasting has opened up a whole nother way of also bringing things to light that maybe don't have space at the moment in TV or the news. 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the uh, for those uh, out there who don't know, uh, the Murdoch family murders down in uh, in the Low Country in South Carolina, which is just across the river from uh, where Brittany is in Savannah. Uh, super interesting, intriguing. There's there's layers and layers of of crazy drama there. It's like it's like the old soap operas, um, you know. In but in real life, there's a lot of sadness, obviously, to it because there were people killed, but. Man, you talk about some craziness. So go go look up the uh, Murdoch murders or the Murdoch family murders uh, podcast out there. But anyway, um, all right. So back to what we're actually here to talk about. All right. So uh, so in in the time that Pod Ops has been up and running, which I know that it hasn't been a, a an entirely long time. It's only been I don't know, not even probably a year. I wouldn't think. Um, what have you guys learned about the? podcasters versus the podcast guests out there. What's the behavior that you're seeing in the app? What are some insights that you can pull out of that, that might help people out there know either how to get booked on podcasts better or how to find better guests. What are some of the trends you're seeing out of the app usage? I mean, I'm, I'm happy to jump in here. I think we both have different perspectives here. I, I think the podcast hosts have been much easier to onboard onto the app because they're excited to get on. So, you know, we launched it earlier uh, this year, saw a huge influx of hosts, which was great. It's more the guests or, and which we've actually stopped calling them guests because we think it scares people off. They're like, Oh God, I don't want to be a guest. Somebody's going to pepper me with questions. So, you know, we're like, let's think about this. So we're, you know, we're saying content creators, professionals, it's anybody who really has something to say, is the guest. So that's what we're trying to market it to. And those are the people we're trying to onboard. And it's as we're talking to people, you know, especially in person, like networking events and conferences have been great for this. Like when we can actually speak to somebody person to person and be like, no, have you thought about, you know, sharing whatever you do on a podcast? Generally, they're like, no, why would I do that? That's dumb. And then we explain, no, it's a really good idea to grow your brand, to get your message out there and get yourself in front of a lot of people who wouldn't have possibly heard of you before. And then kind of the light bulb moment happens. They're like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. And then, you know, the connection happens and they they get on. Uh, generally, once people have gotten on the app, we do see them, uh, Brittany mentioned it earlier, the swiping behavior. It is generally addictive. I don't know, it must like trigger endorphins or something. People love the swiping thing. So we see people swiping quite a bit. Um, which generates chat. So if you match with people, it'll trigger a chat conversation. So we see it generating a lot of that. And so that's where the bookings come from. Brittany, you, you, he, he indicated you might have a different perspective on this. So what have you learned from looking at the app uh, in the time it's been up? I think people are looking for, and, and this is actually coming from like a perspective of also talking to other people that have used other services and things like that. But I think it's the quality of the people going into the app is very, very important to us because I know that people have been frustrated by other services because they're like, you know, the same people keep coming up on my feed. So it's, it's kind of frustrating. So it's making sure that we are marketing it in a way that we are getting a lot of different people in the app and that they're able, they have a pool to choose from. So I think that that's one of the things that we're really focused on right now is just making sure we have the quality of the content creators and the professionals and the experts getting into the app so that the hosts have a great pool to choose from. Yeah. Well, and, and, and to Rob's point a minute ago, you know, if you're approaching people who say, no, I don't want to be a guest on podcasts, that just makes me you know, scratch my head and I think they're, they've lost their minds because uh, how would you answer the question? Okay. What do you do for a living? Do you not want to advertise? Do you not want to get the word out about what you do? Do you not want to send emails and solicit people to, you know, how, how are you growing your business if you're not willing to promote yourself? And so the reason I wanted to have the two of you on the show was because I know there's a lot of content creators out there that are like, Ooh, I pu publish on Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat and I have a live Twitch feed and I do all this stuff. And I've got this business, this brand. Well, if you aren't doing something to facilitate the growth of that brand, other than posting content, then you're, you're putting kind of, kind of guardrails on for your potential. If you are at least being a guest on podcasts, which means going to an app like Pod Ops and you know, establishing a creator profile, then you have the opportunity for people like me or other podcasters in whatever vertical that you're interested in 
finding you and saying, hey, this person will be an interesting you know, person to have on my, my show. And it might be that you're on a podcast that has a couple hundred you know, downloads per episode, which is you know modest, but not huge. But it might be that there's somebody that's got a couple thousand downloads per episode. Now, all of a sudden, you're getting in front of a sizable audience. So for the content creators out there, being on uh, listed on pod ops as at least talent, you know, or, or guest or creator is smart in my opinion. Um, and then of course there's the, the, the Avenue. If you, if you are, you know, I think really smart and, and certainly you have to be interested in it. If you're not interested in having a podcast, you shouldn't have one, but if you are, and you're interested in kind of expanding your media footprint, if you will, and having a really in-depth longer form mechanism to promote who you are and what you do. Podcast is a really good way to do that. And that's where folks like Rob and Brittany come in. So uh, real quickly, uh, Rob, Brittany, where can people find the app? Where can they find Digitive and, and who should be who should be finding it? Yeah, they can find the app at thepodops.com. You can't miss it. We have plastered it all over that website. It is for anybody with a podcast, any content creator who is looking to grow their brand, share their message and connect with podcasters for that interview, that connection. Don't be scared. Interviews are not that that terrifying. It's actually a lot of fun. And yeah, honestly, no no limitations on on the audience there. I think really it's it's open to everybody. Um, like we said, content creators. I think anymore that is almost every one of us. We're creating content in so many different ways. Whether it's in your professional life, almost everyone is an expert in something. So once you get on the platform, there are so many niche podcasts and different types of verticals. You can usually find that person or that host that is the kind of perfect fit for you. And I would just say on that note, podcasting is also a great networking resource. It has helped us make some of the best connections that we've ever had just by having people on our podcast and going on other people's podcasts. So I would say podcasting is a great networking tool. Well, and and one final note for me, for everyone, uh, the 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 most powerful networking tool that I have come across recently uh, is thanks to uh, Brittany and Rob. They gave me an iPad Mini, and uh, and that was uh, that was amazing. I won some sort of contest for sweepstakes. I didn't even know I was entered in some sort of contest for sweepstakes. I don't know if you guys are just like, hey, let's just send this guy an iPad Mini and see if he'll talk to us. Whatever the strategy was there, it got my attention. And of course, within minutes of it arriving, my daughter stole it. So I don't even have it anymore, but she appreciates the, uh, the hardware there. But, uh, thanks for that. I mean, we're glad we could make her day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's probably upstairs right now watching YouTube videos on it. Like, there's, <laughs> there's bigger <laughs> screens. What are you doing? <sighs> Children's. Well, thank you guys both for being on the show. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, thanks for what you're doing with Pod Ops. I think it's a, a great opportunity for people to be on there uh, as potential guests. But also, if you have a show or you're going to have a show, get on there as a host. It's a great way to find people. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Thank you so much. Great stuff from Brittany and Rob. Go check them out on LinkedIn. I will put their profile links in the show notes of this episode at jasonfalls.com. And go sign up for Pod Ops. It can be found at thepodops.com. That's T-H-E-P-O-D-O-P-S, thepodops.com. Worst case scenario, you sign up to be a guest on somebody else's podcast and perhaps get some invitations to come chat and tell your story. Thepodops.com is where to go. Folks, don't forget to drop Winfluence a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. We are on all of them, I think. Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher iHeartMedia, Podchaser, TuneIt, Good Pods, Audible. If we're not where you listen, let me know. We will correct that ASAP. By the way, you can also listen directly on jasonfalls.com or over at marketingpodcasts.net, where my MPN colleagues' shows are also aggregated and presented for your listening pleasure. Whatever your app or listening mode, if you are listening to us right now, and this may come as a surprise to you, but you are, Look for the stars or ratings on that app or site, tap or click, and let us know how we're doing. Also, if you'd like a deep dive on influencer marketing topics every so often, subscribe to my email newsletter at jason.online slash subscribe. I send it every four to six weeks and go deep on a topic to make your influence marketing smarter. I'm working on the next one actually this week, so go sign up, jason.online slash subscribe and get on that list. And I'd love for you to help make a future episode of Winfluence Awesome. Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on 
Send me an email to jason at jasonfalls.com. If you're feeling adventurous, record a voice memo on your phone and email me the file. I'll let you ask the question right here on the show using the recording. Regardless of how you ask it, I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is an audio companion to my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my periodic newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast is coming to you on MPN, the Marketing Podcast Network. There's another show on MPM you might enjoy as well. I'm Gordon Glenister and I'm the host of Influence, the global podcast that shines a spotlight on the influencer marketing industry. And each episode we talk to brand managers, agency strategists, influencer platforms, industry thought leaders and the influencers themselves about the latest trends and stories affecting the influencer marketing industry. And their stories will certainly inspire you. So just hop over to gordonglenister.com or search for Influence the Global Podcast wherever you normally get your podcast from. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts,